This is Fight News Now Extra. My name is John Pollock. Thank you for tuning in as we get you caught up on all of the news coming out from the past weekend. Our analysts John Ramdy and Robin Black will be by as well as Mark Bocek as we discuss this past Saturday's UFC Fight Night card from Bangor, Maine. And authorities have finally caught John Copenhaver. The UFC presented their first card ever in the state of Maine on Saturday night and it was headlined by light heavyweight action as Ryan Bader used his constant threat of the takedown to subdue Ovin St. Preux over the course of 25 minutes. Neither showed a prolonged interest in striking with the other and St. Preux concerned more about using his takedown defense. The judges scored the bout 49-46 twice and one judge had it 48-47 as Bader gets the unanimous win and says he will now have to take care of some nagging injuries before returning. Ross Pearson notched his first official win in over a year on Saturday night by stopping Gray Maynard in the second round of their lightweight bout. Pearson was coming off a highly disputed decision loss to Diego Sanchez this past June. Maynard looked sharp in the opening round with the two standing and Maynard utilizing his jab and landing with the left. Pearson had his rhythm though established by the second and it was Maynard who walked into a right hand and was dropped with a combination as the left sent him down to the mat and Pearson getting the TKO victory. And it was reported on Friday night by TMZ that authorities in Simi Valley, California had successfully captured John War Machine Copenhaver without incident. Copenhaver was on the run for a week and wanted on six felonies and another misdemeanor assault charge for the alleged beating of his ex-girlfriend, Christy Mack. As soon as the story was made public last week, the Bellator organization released him. And we have a full house here at the desk. Robin Black, John Ramdeen, and Mark Bocek joining us. Just had to come in because he wanted to chat about this card from Bangor, Maine. The UFC's debut within the state of Maine. And let's start off. We will chat about the main event. Ryan Bader defeats Ovin St. Preux. There was a lot of criticism going into this card about these two being put in that main event slot. John Ramdeen, this was your main event of the year. How did it deliver? Yeah, well, it was a terrible main event. Both guys did not fight. It wasn't action-packed. Uh, we saw Ovin St. Preux. You know, he's in the main event, so we're supposed to be seeing skills at the highest level. We didn't see that. You, know, you go back earlier in the night, and you look at the fight between Formiga and Zach Makovsky. You got to see high-level mixed martial arts. You'd anticipate you'd see that from the main event. It just didn't work out that way. Well, well, I mean, we've t uh, touched the time in the evolution of the sport where instead of going, who's the best? Who wins? Who finds a way to win? How do you win this? We are now talking about, is it entertaining? And that's a really different time where we're literally at a time. I mean, Mark, you've recently retired. We're at a time now where maybe entertainment is more important to a lot of people than winning fights. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Entertaining's everything. If, you're, if your simple, regular, uneducated fan doesn't understand it and doesn't enjoy it, then there is no sport, right? So so what it's kind of the, the direction it's pushing into is more you know striking striking exchanges not even so much you know technical striking footwork running away more just kind of like exchanges let's see who stays standing but when we do that we kind of start to abandon the strategy so you don't always see who the best fighter is you see who has the best chin and that's not really what you want if you want to see who the best fighter is to, to that point though as you look right now at the top mix at light heavyweight I do not see a Ryan Bader or an Ovin St. Preux being near that. We have an upper echelon right now of John Jones, Daniel Cormier, Alexander Gustafson, Anthony and Johnson. Anthony Johnson is certainly, you know, kind of that wild card that we could definitely see that. But stylistically, I, I don't see Ryan Bader posing that kind of a challenge to either of those four right now, nor did I think that Ryan Bader really made a big case during afterwards. He is asked, who do you want next? I think there's a golden opportunity right now to really voice yourself that, hey, I want Alexander Gustafson. I have that confidence I can beat this guy. And there's a chance that I could leapfrog my way into that upper echelon. I don't think that was really capitalized on. True, but is there, but Mark, you, you can answer this question. Uh, is there a reality that fighters accept when you say, look at, okay, I, I, I know the performance I had against yes. Ovin St. Preux. Now you want me to go up and face an Alexander Gustafson who you know is dangerous and know has more skills than you. Uh, do you have to realize what the pecking order is and, or do you risk it? Well, okay, I'm fighting at the highest level. If I'm fighting John Jones tomorrow, so be it. Or do you have to be smart and take fights that you know that you can win and know that you can keep your head safe? It's like this, this is fighting, so, so nothing's guaranteed, yeah. nothing's 100%. Uh, of course, number one, you have to be confident, you have to believe in yourself, but you, you have to be realistic as well. You, you look at a guy like Bader, uh, he's very tough, he's very dangerous. Uh, sometimes fights don't play out like, like we want to see, mm -hmm. that's the reality of fighting. Uh, but you know, he came up short against Jones, he came up short against Machida. Uh, so you know, with, with performances like that, it's hard to push him into that uh, 
you know, title slot contention. Had the fight been more exciting, who knows? OSP, we don't know. He, he came up with the strike force thing, but he's proven against a guy like Bader, who, who still hasn't made it to the top yet, that he, he couldn't cut it either and needs to work on some takedown defense. Uh, so we'll see, but you, you can't expect any, any of them to go to title shot after that. But I think when Mark is talking about this, he's talking like specifically about their skills. So can Bader beat this guy? Does he have the skills to compete up there? Where will they fit when they fight the best in the world? I think that's one big conversation about fighting, and a separate one, really an entirely separate one is, does he talk well on the mic? Is right. he sell things? Is he marketable? Does he look good? Does he do flashy stuff? And those two things oddly are married now and they never really intended to be because in a sport, the guy who's the best should be the guy fighting for the title. But I mean, that's, that's the reality of what this business is. And I mean, the audience dictates what the rules are. Yeah. And that's, that's just kind of the reality of things. I, I want to touch on some other fights as well. Ross Pearson stopping Gray Maynard. And Gray Maynard's now in a very interesting spot now. It was finished by TJ Grant in pretty violent fashion last year. Same with Nate Diaz in November. Coming back, I thought looked fine in the mm -hmm. first round. And then in the second, running into that right hand and finished off by Pearson, a big win for Ross Pearson, but now with Gray Maynard, I mean, is this that kind of time in your career where if you are his coach, you're sitting down with him and saying, what, what is the next step well, here for Gray? I mean, Dana White has already sort of cut you off that he said he's not gonna try to push Gray Maynard out of the sport. If he wants to compete, uh, let, him, let him do so. You talk about TJ Grant, you talk about Nathan Diaz, TJ Grant was promised a shot at the lightweight title. Obviously, he had health issues. Uh, he, he will probably get another crack if he comes back healthy. Nathan Diaz, you would imagine that he's going to be fighting for a 155-pound title somewhere down the road. So those losses, you really can't take uh, too much away for those. But you look at the fact that his strategy, he won that first round. But when Ross Pearson got close, he didn't keep his head protected. And that's... Yeah. I mean, that's all true, but Mark, you stepped out at the time in your career, you're still winning, you feel safe, you, you, you see the future changing. What, when you see Gray Maynard, do you think that he's being get, given good advice? No. No, uh, you know, if, if the fighter can't be realistic with themselves, you know, it's up to the trainers, it's up to the corner men. Uh, you would think, you know, if they can't handle that, then, you know, a family or friend has to come in. After, you know, three, four uh, losses or KOs in a row, I mean, uh, how much, when is enough enough? Uh, he did look good in the first round, uh, but you could see, as with Chuck, if, if you kind of get clipped in the right spot once, um, yeah, we can say that for anybody, right? But when you go from those five round wars with Edgar and then to the TJ Grant and Nate Diaz and not having enough time to rest and recover and going back into sparring, that's how you destroy careers. So that's up to the, to the trainers, family, friends, so. And when I see you and I see a guy like that, and I'm not judging, I mean, fighters should do what they want, it's their life, but I see your decision and I see his decision to fight and you really look like a smart guy right now. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you the truth. I mean, uh, Matt Hughes, Randy Couture, Chuck Liddell, BJ Penn, uh, they're leaving the sport with a very sour, very, very bitter, uh, negative taste. Uh, of course, every, every, night, every, every loss I've had was really bad for me, but uh, I, I want the last memory of the sport uh, to be a good one and not be bitter about it. Great stuff, guys. For Robin Black, John Ramdeen, Mark Bocek, I'm John Pollock. Catch more Fight News Now Extra because it's coming your way right now.